What is up, Renaissance crew? I'm not sure if my last video, if I called you the Renaissance crew or YouTube. If I did say YouTube, I'm sorry. I meant to say Renaissance crew. Um, I'm about to check out some more comedians that I haven't checked out in a minute. And that's not because I didn't like them or anything like that. It's mainly because I've been checking out other comedians. And I don't like to watch the same comedian over and over and over again. Because I want to give other comedians a chance to be shown on this channel. And I don't want to have to wait months or years later to do that because I'm going through one comedian's entire catalog of segments. So I'm going back to Louis C.K. Uh, this is live from the, I was about to say the Bacon Theater. That sounds amazing. This is live from Beacon Theater, and he does a segment on smoking pot. So I will give you guys my opinion about pot and marijuana, as well as a quick review of the video that I'm going to be reacting to, because apparently people think their reviews and reactions are the same. And when I watch a video that is irrelevant, and only if I address the video after is if it's a reaction. The entire thing is a reaction, including the times when I just sit there and laugh, or the times when I sit there and make small comments during the video. That's still a reaction. <laughs> Let's check this out. I can't smoke pot, because it's the same thing. I'm too old for it. Sometimes young people come up to me after shows, hey, do you want to smoke some pot? I'm like, can I get my portion to smoke without you alone later? Because <laughs> I don't want to stand in a parking lot with some 20-year-olds. <laughs> Last time I got high, I was in Kansas City, and I got high because I was in Kansas City, and it was <laughs> shitty. So after the show, so these kids that worked at the club, they're like, you want to smoke some pot? I'm like, yes. So I'm standing in a parking lot with these kids, like 20 years old, and we're smoking a joint. And I'm taking huge hits, because I had no idea. Oh. I didn't know they'd been working on this shit like it's the cure for cancer. I didn't understand <laughs> the fucking technology that's got into making pot so powerful. Because when I was a kid, you could just smoke a joint for a while. Now you take two hits and you go insane. <laughs> It's not doable anymore. And I, and I was taking big hits, like big 1970s jean jacket bad company hits. Here come the jesters! One, two, three! It's all part of my fantasy! I'm like, yeah. And even the kid with the wooden hole of no ear. I don't get why people the get those. That looks weird to me. With the wood. I don't know what that is. That's like the uh, African people that have the damn plate things in their lips. It's like, I don't get it. Or the people in Asia where they stack the rings on their necks and make their necks like this long. I don't get it. I mean, I know it's a cultural thing, but I don't know. Even he was like, that. you should be careful. That's a lot of pot. That's very strong marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Running with the devil! Just fucking... <laughs> and in about 10 seconds, everything just... <laughs> beer. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is an ordeal now. <laughs> I'm not gonna feel okay for a very long time. <sighs> And everybody's just standing around and talking, and I'm hoping, like I'm really hoping, that I look like this. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that I was just scanning insanely. <laughs> I was actually counting, like, look at her for five, four, three, two, one. Switch to him. Five, four, three, two. Randomize. Don't go in the same direction. Five, <laughs> four, three. Nod your head. That looks like you're listening. If you nod your head. Overanalyzing <laughs> shit. And at one point I realized I need to get out of here because the air is hitting my arm weirdly and they can tell. <laughs> they can totally know like that I'm not handling the way air is touching my arm right now. <laughs> Why am I doing that with my hand? That's weird to do that with your hand. Nobody stands like this. Nobody stands like this, just fucking, no, that's also, <laughs> that's weird too, that's crazy. Put your hands in your pocket. 
I gotta go. But I didn't know how to leave because I had this dilemma. We're all standing in a perfect circle facing each other. And I thought, it's gonna be insane if I just turn my, I'm one person with my back now. Do I just back away like this and <laughs> hope that they fill in? <laughs> And then I thought, no, say something. Say something out loud to them that smooths the transition of you leaving. Okay, what do I say? Pick a thing to say. Goodbye. That's a, that's a nightmare. That's a, just goodbye. That's not even, that's just noises. <laughs> Finally, I walked away and I said, I'm leaving! <laughs> and I, I know it was that bad because they all went, oh, shit, okay, all right. Whoa. Like, I'll never see those people again as long as I live. And then I had to get in a car. I forgot that I had rented a car. And I have to drive back to the hotel. And I'm driving on this highway in Missouri. And at one point I realized, I think it's been about 25 minutes since I looked out the front window of this car. <laughs> I've just been dealing with shit directly in. Oh, uh, shit. There's a whole spectrum of responsibility out here. I'm supposed to take part in this. And then at one point, I remember I was at a drive through and I was terrified because there's a lady sticking her head out a window. And she's mad. She's going, sir, sir. And I, I just kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I had the window closed. I had no fucking idea. What part of the transaction am I? Did I pay yet? Have I ordered? Did I, have I been sitting here for 40 minutes just eating? <laughs> At the window and I ate the paper and everything? Sir! And I just went, I know, I don't want it! And I just fucking folded. <laughs> <bolted. laughs> So I can't do that anymore. <laughs> then the people after pulled up and was like, Louis C.K. just bought you lunch, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, very funny. Um, marijuana, marijuana. That last story actually reminded me a lot of a story similar to my first and so far only experience with marijuana. Normally, I do not smoke marijuana at all. Not because I think that it's some type of gateway drug or whatever the fuck the weird people on in the 80s and the early 90s and dare and shit try to make you think it was. The reason I don't smoke marijuana is because to me it sounds like another bill to add to your damn budget because I'm pretty sure you're not getting free marijuana. Somebody has to supply you that shit and that's just another thing I can pretty much save my money on. It's like cigarettes. I would rather save my money than sit there and have to try to buy some more of that shit. Um... Again, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it being legalized. A lot of people think that it's something that's bad if it gets legalized. I don't smoke it I, or anything like that, but at the same time, I did do research on it, and it was obviously uh, scapegoated for a completely different issue. It was just something that was used to, just like a lot of politicians tend to do, they tend to find scapegoats so that they can have the public fear something and they can use that as a base to try to rally people to poll so they can vote for them. That's all the hell that is. That's all it's ever been and that's all a lot of different things that politicians do tend to be. Um, now, with that being said, let me tell you guys the first experience I ever had with marijuana or at least the only experience as of right now that I've ever had with marijuana. Now, I was dating this girl and she was... And she smoked marijuana. I didn't smoke it. Um, I didn't have a problem with her smoking in my car, but I didn't smoke it. One day I decided that I was going to smoke it with her. Now, already you probably are thinking red flag because I never smoked before. This girl I was dating, I was probably dating her for probably a few months now, but not long enough to the point where you want to share your first drug experience with. Uh, so I'm at her house, which is... I want to say like 45 to an hour away from my house. So, and I'm in the car. I'm not at her, inside her house. I'm in the car because 
our she she was we were dating each other, but we weren't serious enough where we were meeting families or anything like that. We were just like we would. God damn it, I would hit it every once in a while, okay? If you want me to explain it that way, that's what the fuck happened. I hit it whenever, you know, we were bored or some shit. And the reason why I smoked whatever was because I thought that I was going to hit it. I'm sorry, but that's what the hell I thought. So I smoked some weed with her in the car. And then I, yeah, first thing I remember happening was I had a coffin fit. But it wasn't a coffin fit where like, you know, you feel it like all the way in the back. <coughs> it was just like I couldn't catch myself. Like I would cough, but then like there was still a tickle in my throat, so I would cough, and it just wouldn't go away. So I just kept coughing, and it was like, oh, this sounds very bad. And it got to the point where it was like tickling my throat, so I couldn't even hold it in because. Like <coughs> so if anybody out there is thinking like, oh, well, if I, if I smoke weed, I'll be able to handle it. It's not. Ne- that's not necessarily how it happens. It's not like an actual sickness coffin fit where you feel like just something is just grabbing you. It's just like a small tickle and it just won't go away. Um, so I was smoking with her and then um, she ended up having to go inside or some shit. We it was late. Um, I figured I needed to get home and at that point I wasn't even thinking about a booty call or nothing. I was thinking about getting home. Now, something I didn't think about before I started smoking was I got to drive home an hour <laughs> completely high because just like Louis C.K., I was taking some big ass tokes. So I had to get from her house to my house. And like I said, this is an hour on the freeway, not like in a neighborhood on the freeway. So it's a long ass distance. Now, I went and I started driving, and the first thing I noticed was right when you get out of her house, like, leaving her road, there's, like, another road that you turn, and it's, like, very short, and it's a stop sign, then you turn onto the freeway. So, I drove down the road, and then I turned onto the little road that leads to the freeway that I want to say is, just thinking about it, it's probably, like, I want to say, like, 50 yards. It's not long. But for some reason, when I was driving towards that stop sign, It felt like I would not reach it. Like, I I kept driving, but the distance wasn't closing, really. I'm like, why the fuck is this road so damn long? And then I turned onto the freeway, which leads to another light, and then you turn onto the freeway freeway. You know, there's, like, those little interstates, and then there's, like, the, or the little freeways, and then there's these giant interstates. So, it was, like, a little freeway, and then you turn onto the actual freeway, and there's a light there. So, I'm driving up. And again, the damn light was taking forever. And then when I started to approach the light, I started to hit my brake and I noticed I was too far away to be hitting my damn brake. Like it just felt like it would not get there fast enough. And then it wasn't until I was actually driving on the freeway that I realized that I was driving 15 miles an hour on the highway. (laughs) Like... All I can say is thank God for speedometers because if it wasn't for those, I would have been driving like 20 miles on the freeway and not like sounds were just moving all slow, like in slow motion. It was like, like the sounds around me, everything was just like quiet and calm. Like you're driving a real good luxury car, the damn, the, the sound of the road and stuff. You can't hear none of it. You just like, it just feels like, it just sounds like you're floating. It's just like, and everything is just like like I said moving in slow motion and it wasn't even like because even when I started driving normal speed like I was monitoring the speedometer so I knew okay I'm going 65 now so I'm doing good (laughs) I'm I'm going normal speed nobody's going to suspect anything I'm going 65 miles an hour even when I was going 65 miles per hour it was like everything was still kind of slowed down and then my stupid ass was sitting there thinking is, does weed give me superpowers? <laughs> like, do I have enhanced reflexes now? <laughs> like, I feel like I could just weave in and out of traffic without any type of issue. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand why. But for some reason, it felt like everything was moving in slow motion. Even when I was driving at normal speed, everything was moving in slow motion. And I'm thinking, like, 
I gotta start smoking some weed before I start playing sports or something. Like, what the? This is this is this is kind of nice. Like, <laughs> I don't have any idea what the fuck happened to me. Maybe I'm an anomaly. Maybe I am a superhero. Maybe weed is like a triggering factor that activates my superpowers. I don't know. Maybe that's the case. But who knows? Anyway, that was my first marijuana story. If anybody has an interesting, funny, or if they've only smoked marijuana once, their first marijuana experience. Uh, leave it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you all think, because I want to see if anybody else had this supernatural uh, reflex enhancing experience that I had. <laughs> and I'd really like to hear if somebody experienced it during a fight or something, something where your reflexes actually need to be useful. Um, well, to end my story, I did end up getting home. I didn't have any issues. I was able to actually be aware of the traffic and you know, not make myself look suspicious. So that was a plus for me, I guess. I, I think I handled my first time pretty well, except for that initial start where I was only driving 15 miles an hour. But besides that, I think I handled it pretty well. Uh, if you guys felt like you handled it well, or if you didn't handle it well, make sure you leave some comments down below. I'm really interesting or interested in hearing what you got to say. I am the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci. I uh, hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And make sure you leave these comments, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else. This is probably the last video I'm going to do for today. So I will probably just, I'll probably go and look up different candidates for the election for tomorrow and figure out which candidates actually are worth voting for. So the ones that don't take campaign donations and the ones that, or not campaign donations, but big campaign donations from corporations and things like that and you know ones that fit my policy uh preferences and stuff make sure you check out voting history when you're going looking for a politician don't worry about what the fuck they're saying on tv or what they say in speeches or campaigns because they're going to tell you what you want to hear go look up their voting history and what they've actually done when they have been in office or wherever they were at make sure you look up their backstory um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else, like I said. I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci, signing out. Deuces.